hello guys welcome back to my channel in today's tutorial i'll be sharing with you how i made this beautiful birthday ball dress for a one year old if you're seeing my video for the first time thank you so much for watching please support the channel by giving this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it share with your friends subscribe to my channel watch this video to the very end it helps my channel and let's get right into the tutorial On the shoulder line, I placed half of the shoulder measurement of 4.5 inches and I came down 5.5 inches for the armhole level. So I'm placing these 5.5 inches on the other side and I'll do the same with the shoulder measurement below to help me square out these lines correctly. With my tape placed on the shoulder line, I went out 2 inches for the neck width and I came down one and a half inches for the neck depth and I connected these points. With my tape placed on the shoulder line, I will go down one inch for the shoulder slope and I'll connect it back to the neckline. I will find the midpoint from that shoulder slope point to the bust level and square it out a little and on that point I will come in by half an inch. On the armhole level, I will place one quarter of the chest measurement of five and a half inches and I will draw in the armhole curve. With my tape placed on the shoulder line, I came down nine inches for the half length of the bodies and I will square out this point. On this line, I will place one quarter of the waist circumference of five and a half inches and I will connect the points. I will also draw in my neck curve and our front bodies is complete. For the back bodies, I have marked my zip allowance and labeled it and I've also cancelled out the other line so that we don't get confused. On the shoulder line, just like we did in the front, I'm placing half of my shoulder measurement of 1.5 inches and I'll go down by 5.5 inches for the armhole level and I'll square out these points. On the shoulder line, I went out 2 inches for the neck width and I came down 0.5 inch for the neck depth and I'll connect the points. With my tape on the shoulder line, I will go down 1 inch for the shoulder slope and I'll connect it back to the neck line. I will find the midpoint from the shoulder slope point to the armhole level and square it out a little and on that point, I will come in by 0.25 inch. On the armhole level, I will place one quarter of the chest measurement of 5.5 inches and with these three points, I will draw in my back armhole curve. With my tape placed on the shoulder line, I will go down 9 inches for the half length level and I will square out this point. On this line, I will place one quarter of the waist circumference of 5.5 inches. I will connect this point to the armhole level and draw in my back neck curve. At the center back of the bodies, I will come up by half an inch to remove any bulge or folds. I will blend it back into the line and that completes our back bodies. The sleeve length for this dress is 11 inches, I will mark that and square it out. The cap height is 2 inches, I will mark that and square it out. And on that line, I will place half of the arm circumference of 4.25 inches. And on the band, I will place half of the band measurement of 3.25 inches and I will connect these points. For the sleeve curves, I will measure the armhole curves on the bodies. For the front bodies, I have 5.1 inches and on the back bodies, I have 5 inches. 
So with these numbers, I will go in and draw in my front and back armhole curves till it corresponds with these numbers. I have here my front and back armhole curves drawn and as you can see, the numbers corresponded. I will go ahead and add seam allowances on this sleeve and on the bodies and that's a wrap for the pattern drafting. For the lower part of the dress, we'll be cutting that directly on the fabric. Here are all the materials I'll be working with, an invisible zipper and some embellishment, a horsehair braid or a crinoline, the pattern for the dress which has been drafted. I also have here some hard net. I'm yet to decide between the hard net or the crinoline. I also have some tool which I'll be using for the lower part of the dress, some Ankara fabric, satin, and the lining of the dress which is a cotton lining for this tutorial i'm using two meters and a quarter of two to make this dress at the end of this tutorial you'll be able to decide how full or scanty you want your gathers to turn out i have folded the two into four along the selvage the selvage is the side where you measure the yardage of the material I'll go ahead and take the measurement of the first step of the dress. It's a two-step ball dress and for this I'm using 8 inches and this includes my seam allowance. The second step I'm marking at 11 inches and this also includes my seam allowance. I will cut out another set like this off camera and the quarter inches I will trim off so that on the first layer we will have 4 yards and on the second layer we will have 4 yards which will be gathered back into the waist circumference of my client. The total length of my satin is 44 inches that is a meter and 8 inches. I'll fold it into two in a triangular shape and hold it in place with pins. I multiply the waist circumference plus zip allowance of my client by 1.5 inches to add volume and this gave me 36 inches. Divide by two because our fabric is folded into two and I have 18 inches. So I'm just checking on the fabric how much I need to go down to get the waist circumference of 18 inches on fold. After a few trials, I was able to get the measurement by coming down at 22 inches and once I confirmed this, I placed the measurement of the lining at 11 inches and this includes seam allowance. So this is just reconfirming what we just did and as you can see, we have our 18 inches intact. I will make my notches and we'll move over to cutting of the lining. If you have other ways of doing this, please let me know in the comment section. For the lining, I did practically the same thing I did with the satin. The only difference is that I used the exact waist measurement plus zip allowance to cut this one. So just like I did with the satin, I'm just checking how much I need to go down to get half of the waist circumference of my client. Once that is confirmed, I'll place the measurement of the lining at 9 inches and this includes my seam allowance. So once again, I'm reconfirming what we just did and as you can see, we have our 12 inches intact. I'll go ahead and make my notches and that's all for the cutting of this dress. These are all the fabrics we've cut out. For the strip of fabric at the hem of the two on this dress, we'll be cutting that out from this Ankara fabric along in the video. I'll start by joining the bodies first at the shoulders and I'll do the same with the lining. I'll be doing some of the very simple sewings of camera to save time, so I'll go ahead and attach the sleeves. I have attached the sleeves to the bodies and to the lining 
and we'll move over to prepping of the tool. So for the tool, we'll be attaching this strip of fabric to the hem of the tool. We are doing 4 yards for the first layer and 4 yards for the second layer. I wanted to add crinoline to this dress but I felt it will add more weight because my Ankara is a little bit thick so I'll be using the hard net instead. I will use this piece to show you how I attach the Ankara to the tool. I attach the two pieces first with a straight stitch then I top stitch the tool on the seam allowance to make it lay flat and I went ahead to trim off the excess. I went ahead to press down the half inch seam allowance I'll be using to top stitch the Ankara on the tool and then I folded over the Ankara on the tool in the way I would top stitch it and gave it a good press. I'll advise you take your time to do this so that both sides of the material will turn out flat and without folds. So I went further to pin it in place, making sure both fabrics lay flat, smoothing out any folds, after which I ran my stitches. Please ensure you do this on a table or on a flat surface to get good results. This is what we have so far. I'll go ahead and stitch this and gather it so that we can have a clip of what we are doing before we proceed. Et voila! So this is what 2 yards of 2 when gathered looks like. Remember we are working with the waist circumference of 22 inches excluding zip allowance. Now if I measure this, I have here 11 inches which is half of the waist circumference we are working with excluding zip allowance. But I will adjust this to accommodate the zip allowance. So this will either be in the front or at the back. So the 4 yards we are using for each step, in my opinion, it's okay. I'll go ahead and finish off the rest of the tool off camera, join them, gather it. I will also gather the lining and we'll proceed from there. I have finished off the rest of the tool. I have joined the tool together and gathered it. I've also gathered the satin and I've attached both together with a straight stitch. The bottom of the gown turned out full. I will keep this aside and work on the lining. On the lining, I came down 2.5 inches and I marked it all the way around. I have also gathered my net. My net is not that very stiff stiff kind of net. It's stiff but not very stiff so I used 4 meters for this and I'll be attaching it on this line that I've marked all the way around. I will also turn out the bodies of this dress with the lining and add an invisible zipper. I will quickly do this off camera before we continue. I have turned the bodies of the dress with the lining and I have added an invisible zipper. I have a tutorial on my channel on an easy way to attach an invisible zipper if you are a beginner. I will leave the link to that video in the description. So I'll go ahead and attach the bottom of this dress to the bodies of the dress without the lining. I have pinned it in place with pins and as you can see I didn't pin with the lining. I'll go ahead and attach them together with a straight stitch. I have attached them with a straight stitch and we are almost halfway through. I will keep this aside and we will work on attaching the lining. For the lining, I will go ahead and attach my already gathered net on the line that I have already marked on the lining. If you want your gown to be even more fuller, you place it the way I'm showing you in the video and stitch it down. Then you flip it over and top stitch on it. This will give your net this standing effect that will help puff the dress and make them more fuller. But I will not be doing that because my dress is already looking full. 
So I have stitched down the net on the lining and have trimmed off excess seam allowance. I will go ahead and attach this lining to the dress. I have attached the lining to the dress. At this point, I felt that the lining is a little short, although it's 2 inches shorter than the length of the dress. But if I'm to make this again, I will make the lining to be the same length with the length of the satin. So in case you plan on making this dress, please take note of this. This is what the wrong side of the dress looks like after attaching the lining. The dress is looking very neat on the inside. This dress is almost done. And for the satin, I will trim off 1 inch so that it will be 1 inch shorter than the skirt of the dress. The skirt is the lower part of the dress. At this point, this dress is almost complete. The only thing remaining is to finish installing the invisible zipper on the lower side of the dress. Finish off the hem of the lining and the satin and overlock raw edges. I will quickly do that and I will show us the final result. So here is the final result. The dress didn't disappoint. It came out very beautiful and full. This dress actually has a detachable bow at the back. The embellishments I showed earlier on in the tutorial was for the bow to jazz it up a little. <laughs> but time was not on my side so I couldn't do it in this tutorial. But we'll definitely find time to do it. I trimmed down the net from 6 inches to 5 inches so that it can stay under the lining. I'm also showing you the places I joined the net on the first and the second step of the dress. So guys, that's a wrap for me. If you have enjoyed this video, please do not forget to give the video a thumbs up. Leave all your questions in the comments. Share with your friends. Support my channel by watching this video to the very end. And until my next one, a bientôt!